econometrics, text on panel data analysis and multi-level modeling emphasize the importance of the random effects assumption. In this video, I will explain what this assumption is about and how it can be tested and justified. Let's start by looking at the normal regression model. So we have the y, the dependent variable, we have the x is the predictors, we have the beta the regression coefficients, and then we have the u, the error term, which importantly is assumed to be uncorrelated with all the predictors. If the u correlates with any of the predictors, then we run into endogeneity problem where all of these regression coefficients will be biased or inconsistent, at least potentially all. When we um, move from this basic regression model to the multi-level regression model or panel data regression model, we add more components to the error term. So we add this uh, U, at minimum, this random intercept uj here, and that is an unobserved random effect. So that uj here tells how much clusters vary from one another. For example, how much individuals that are observed over time vary from other individuals that are observed over the same time points. In the multi-level modeling context, this assumption that the error term is uncorrelated with the predictors applies to both uj and uij. And failure of this assumption leads to endogeneity problem, which causes all these coefficients of x to be potentially biased and inconsistent. Whereas in normal regression model, this error term, the, the assumption that the error term is uncorrelated with the x's can be tested directly. In multi-level context, there actually are tests for this uj term here, whether it's correlated with the x's or not. But before we go into the text, into the tests, let's go through uh, three different ways of understanding what it means that uj is correlated, uncorrelated with the x's. There are three different ways of understanding the random effects assumption. One is using the equation that I just showed that all uj terms are uncorrelated with all predictors. So the uj is uncorrelated with all predictors and that's, that's an assumption. Because the uj itself is not observed, we cannot calculate its correlation with the predictors. Therefore, this way of presenting the random effect assumption does not give us anything that would be directly testable. And it's also uh, trying to understand what the random effects assumption means is, is kind of difficult because the uj is, is fairly abstract. It's all the differences between individuals that are not accounted by the model. The second way to understand uh, the random effects assumption, and this is the foundation for some of the statistical analysis that we can apply when the random effects assumption holds, is that the within effect and the between effect are the same. So the within effect is calculated by, for example, by taking a subtracting cluster mean of y from y, subtracting cluster mean of x from x, and then running a regression on this cluster mean center data that gives the within effect. Then the between effect is a regression on cluster mean. So cluster mean of y, cluster mean of x, and cluster mean of other x's. The assumption, the random effect assumption in this context is that all the between effects and all the within effects are the same. And this can actually be tested. So we can do, for example, a post estimation Wald test by running this as a system of equations and test if these uh, two coefficients are equal. But that's um, somewhat challenging to do because you have to estimate a system of equations. Then there's a third way, which I think is the superior way of understanding the random effects assumption, because it allows also to understand it from more uh, of a theoretical perspective. The third way of understanding the random effects assumption is that there are no contextual effects. So a variable only has a within effect and, and not, not contextual effects. For example, if uh, 
person's intelligence influences how person behaves in a team, then uh, a person's intelligence doesn't influence how others behave or how others behave, uh, how intelligent others are doesn't influence the behavior of the focal individual. So the variable only has a within effect. That's the third way of understanding uh, the random effects assumption. And this is something that you could argue from theory. For example, you could say that uh, when we think about team members and, and the effect of gender, gender affects individual performance, but the um, gender distribution of balance within a team doesn't affect the individual. So we would say that uh, gender has only a within effect, but no contextual effects. And this can be tested. Uh, you specify a regression model where you have the original predictors, and then you have the cluster means of the predictors, and then uh, the assumption is that all these regression coefficients for the cluster means are zeros, and that can be tested. It can be tested for individual variable using the normal t-test in a regression model or z-test if you apply maximum likelihood estimation. And it can be also tested for all these using a Walt test. So that uh, gives us something testable. This is not testable, though these two are testable. And uh, let's take a look at the actual tests. So this is from a paper that I've written with uh, John Antonakis and Nikolai Bastardos. We have three different ways. There are the, the traditional way of testing random e effects assumption that econometrics books explain is the Hausmann test. I have another video about the general Hausmann test, but the idea briefly is that you run two different estimators on the same data. So we could have, for example, a model that makes the random effects assumption and a model that doesn't make the random effects assumption. Let's call it fixed effects estimator or correlated random effects estimator in this case. And uh, then we compare. Is the model, are the estimates similar enough so that we can conclude that the, the estimator that is more efficient, that makes more assumptions, is also consistent. Then we have likelihood ratio test. The idea of likelihood ratio test is that we estimate two different models. We have a model with the cluster means included in the data in the model and a model without the cluster means. Then we do a likelihood ratio test where we compare those two models to see if the cluster means explain the data. If the test is non-significant, then we conclude that the cluster means don't explain the data, which implies that there is no contextual effect in the model. Then we have the, uh, the uh, WALT test or F test for normal regression analysis, which can be considered as a special case of WALT test. And this is basically you run one model with the predictors and their cluster means, and then you test at the same time if all those pre uh, the coefficients of the cluster means are all zeros. And this is fairly simple uh, to, to calculate and also it can be calculated using robust standard errors, which for example the Hausmann test cannot. So this is uh, my favorite test of these. So let's take a summary of, of these things that I just explained. The random effects assumption is important because if this assumption fails and it's, it's made but it fails, then it leads to our inconsistent and biased estimates. It can be understood in three different ways. One is that the unobserved term that we don't really observe is uncorrelated with the predictors. This is kind of an abstract way and, and maybe not so easy to understand. The second way to understand the random effects assumption is that the within effect and the between effect are the same. The third way is to understand it, that there are no contextual effects in the data. And this third way is something that you could actually argue from theory that, for example, intelligence only affects individual's performance, but not anyone around that individual. Then we have three different tests. We have the Hausmann test, which is the classic way in econometrics for testing this assumption. We have likelihood ratio test that can be applied to compare maximum likelihood estimates. So you estimate the model with cluster means, without cluster means. And then we have the F or Wald test that you estimate, by, uh, that you calculate from a model that contains the predictors and their cluster means, and you check if all the cluster means have coefficients of zero at the same time. 
Finally, the random effects assumption, if made, should be justified based on theory. So why do you think that individual characteristics don't affect others in the context? Or why do you think that others in the context don't affect an individual? This is important because if you run an estimation technique that makes the random effects assumption and you are in violation of that assumption, then you have an endogeneity problem, which means that potentially all of your, est or your, of your estimated coefficients will be inconsistent and biased and basically simply broke.